Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about one-on-ones. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how do you deal with an engineer who talks primarily about their promotion in all the one-on-one -on -one meetings, even though they have only joined the company a few months ago? Well, I would say that you need to figure out sort of what their expectations are and it usually helps if you have a career plan or something like that within the company where you can sort of outline for the for the engineer what they're going to have to do in order to be applicable for a promotion that's what I would suggest you can't really uh, well if this is a very ambitious person it's important to understand that the the worst thing you can do is sort of dismiss their ambition because the reality is that their drive is to their credit and I would say also as a side note that you should think a little bit about why it is that you feel that quote-unquote just a few months isn't enough for someone to be applicable for a promotion uh, because the reality is that if you're actually running your company based on merit then it shouldn't really matter how long they've been in the company. It's more a question of have they been there for long enough to build up a track record of value that proves that they meet the expectations that you have for a promotion. And my guess is that perhaps you are not so clear either. Uh, you, you, maybe that's the root problem here, uh, that you're not so clear on what expectations you have in order for someone to be applicable for a promotion because usually the way that these things tend to work is that the managers who are in charge of promoting people are simply winging it if that makes sense you're actually just going on gut feeling when you feel like someone deserves a promotion and that is in my opinion the worst way you can promote somebody because the the whole point of promoting people is in my opinion at the very least it's not about rewarding someone for committing to your company that's the worst reason you can possibly use because then you're basically rewarding people in terms of uh, not in terms of what they produce and the value that they give but you reward them based on other factors and that's always a recipe for disaster because then you get people who may not actually be the best suitable uh, in a position you put them in a position where they have a larger impact which means that their inability to perform might actually spread even further than you would like so if a person has joined your company just been there for a few months but uh, like you I mean of course they can have like weird expectations and that's why I was start talking uh, first and foremost that you have to define what those expectations are uh, I can of course go through with you a little bit of, like the sort of roadmaps that I have suggested to companies for like how do you identify top talent how do you leverage top talent and how do you provide a sustainable career path for top talent that doesn't necessarily end in uh, uh, like the management track because that's usually what managers will do like your promotion strategy is almost always going to end up with somebody going into management but I, I have a uh, a slight bit of a track record in how to structure a career path for developers who will usually the ones that have uh, talked to me about like sort of how they can improve and so forth they're pretty happy with the with the overall structure but that the, the the fundamental thing is that you have to sit down and do that because once you have defined the expectations in a clear to understand way then you can present this to the engineer and tell them this is where you are or either like let's like let's try to figure out where you are and usually this is a complicated matter so it's one part of course uh, the uh, like the in input from the developer your input and this is where you as a manager which is unfortunately usually the case you don't really know how well these people are doing which is once again the reason why I argue that these sorts of discussions and these sorts of uh, like uh, to, to run an engineering company well as a manager you have to be a goddamn developer 
and most of them are not so they're always it's, it's always a problem this is never going to be a fair situation until we as an industry realizes that it is not feasible to have a manager who does not have a heavy background in software engineering who can literally go and sit down and understand the code that the developers are writing because when you do that then you can identify top talent if in, in in every sense of the word me and people like myself or like the developers who have like that I work with we are much more qualified to identify how good a software developer is than any of our managers they have no chance in hell to figure that out on average we do and that is because we know the work and when you're looking for top town it's that that's what you're looking for because we don't have a simple metric here guys it's much much easier in other areas where you can have like a metric that can very clearly define if you meet the expectations but in software development it's just not the case it's a very complicated matter so you need people who really know their stuff in order to do those evaluations so get people like that to help you out with the evaluation, L talk to like the developers, coworkers, or if they have tech leads or seniors and so forth, and get them involved in the process. So you have one part, uh, like the uh, like the soft skills and like the feedback of the groups that this person is interacting with, because if they have generally good feedback, and you have people who will vouch for like yeah this is a person who seems to know what they're doing then there's no problem in do, like promoting them early on but the quicker you can get to something that is semi-official for like what you're expect expecting usually the way it should go is you start off with the basics if it's a, it's a junior developer then you expect them to know the tech stack and then work their up the way up to like when they actually understand how to to work within the domain and they can deliver basically autonomously etc etc then they're applicable for a promotion because then you're basically a mid-level developer if you don't need a lot of extra help and you know the domain and you can ship things without you know think about it this way if everybody else went on vacation can this developer do the work by themselves that's a mid-level developer basically uh, doesn't have to and the, sooner, the quicker you get to that point the better because once you're in that state then you're quote unquote only making money from this individual and then the higher up you get the more impact this person is going to have to have on like the overall community and the developers and like the code and etc etc but once you get to that point and you have that defined uh, then you've given the developer like the who is uh, who, who you're talking about all the things that you can provide and now the key moment comes can you structure such an uh, improvement roadmap so that the developer's personal ambitions of growing very nicely fits in into the ambitions of what the company is looking for? That's a very complicated thing to do, and it requires you to uh, know both the company and the way that engineers do their work. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, if you have an engineer who's just looking to get promoting uh, promotions, you try to leverage that ambition as much as possible. Create a a promotion roadmap and uh, figure out how to actually leverage all of that ambition. Because usually these people who are talking about early promotions and so forth, either they're a little bit weird in terms of like what their expectations are, and they want to get promoted like for nothing. But in many cases, it might be that this person has just identified that they are actually doing better uh, in terms of like they're improving quality and doing testing like they're following better practices it might be that you actually have a person here is actually really really good and it turns out that the reason why this is a weird expectation is that you think that it's too early for to promote this person but the reality is that this person could actually be one of your best and the reason why nobody else is do acting the same way is because they simply are they, they don't really care because you, your idea is that you, you're measuring the effectiveness of your employee based on time which is the worst thing you can possibly do because what you should be going by is merit but the problem is for the average software engineering manager you don't know what merit looks like because you don't actually know the work so you have to get the informed so that you can evaluate if this person is full of shit and like overestimating themselves or they're actually pretty good and it turns out that all the other people that you have in the company are sort of like half-assing things or like you know they're not as ambitious as this individual and that ambition can thrive if you give it the right focus and the idea that you should know your business so well that you can direct that focus towards something where the person grows and the company benefits from that growth have a great day